guys welcome back to my channel uh so i actually had a pop-up for my business today but unfortunately we got rained out and we had to uh reschedule <laughs> so i figured i would take the day to catch up on a fun little personal project and share it with you guys today is going to be a quick video and of course we're going to be doing one of my favorite things sewing today's project is it's really a pretty easy project uh, but I thought it may come in handy with the holidays coming up and as we head into times where um, maybe you're going to have more family in your RV or you're going to be cooking more. I'm pretty much making a giant mat for the table so I'm able to put hotter items on it without doing any damage. The table that's in our RV is pretty much plastic and I think it, it's probably pretty standard. I've seen several models that have this table and even in some of the newer models that we went to go look at, uh, the tables seem to be all plastic. However, keep in mind that your table may be made of totally different material. So maybe this isn't something that you need, but it still may be a fun project for you just for decoration. So I'm gonna be using layers of fabric and insole fleece but I wouldn't put a roasted turkey straight out of the oven directly on the table still. Um, for the days that I end up actually cooking a bigger holiday meal, I will probably keep the bulk of it in the kitchen area or on the stove. And we will most likely just be eating on hot plates on the table. However, the reason that I'm making this mat in the first place is because I learned the hard way that this table is maybe not the most durable and it is actually pretty easy to mess up the table in here. I ate a bowl of oatmeal on that side of the table, I would say about a year ago, and I can still see where that bowl was sitting exactly on the table. I honestly didn't even think that the oatmeal was that hot. I had no idea it would leave like a discolored ring on the table. So it's not incredibly noticeable, but it's still a little unsightly and I would prefer to not make a repeat of that. So onto the project. Unless you have a giant table in your RV, you may be able to use something or some fabric that you already have in your stash or feel free to use this as an excuse to take a fabric shopping trip. You can use this mat for holidays. I know some of you have people flying in to see you or you want to bring the whole family and take a big fun Thanksgiving camping trip in your RV. You could make them for spring, summer, or they have fabric for even your favorite sports teams if you use your RV to tailgate, you name it. So the fabric that I'm using today is a mix of remnant fabric that I got. This was about $3, I think, from Joann's and really just whatever I happen to have on hand that I thought might look nice together. I did have to buy the insulation fabric. Um, this is that insole fleece. Uh, so you may have to go shopping for that. You can also use the same materials and um, the same concept of what I'm gonna make today to make smaller placemats for the table or maybe pot holders that work better for you. Um, I just figured this table is not that big. Might as well make it like one big mat and I can just fold it up and put it away when we're done with it. Fabric wise though, this is probably gonna take me, I would say like roughly two yards. The table is um, about 36 inches or so. Um, you may end up using a little bit more fabric if maybe you have something that has a directional pattern on it and you're really picky about trying to make sure that you match that pattern, you might end up maybe getting just a little bit extra so you're able to kind of stagger the fabric. The other thing that you're gonna need here is you're also gonna need a heavy duty needle. I'm probably gonna put a 16 in here um, and I usually use that to sew through heavier, thicker fabrics. And for the sake of expediency, I am going to go ahead and get this cut out and then I'm going to put the links of all the measurements and basically everything that I use to make this um, down below this video. So I'm going to be using this striped fabric for the bottom layer and the borders. I'm going to be using some batting and the insole fleece uh, for the middle and this remnant fabric is actually indoor outdoor fabric that I'm going to use for the center of the top and the border will just go right around that. Um, you can make the top and bottom the same. You can skip the border if you want. Um, your work is your oyster, so you know don't be afraid to get creative. 
um, you know, after you have measured out your table and you have picked out your fabrics, you're ready to really get started. Um, just make sure, a little note, uh, that once you decide how big the mat is gonna be, uh, don't forget to add seam allowance to all your pieces uh, before cutting your fabric out. Um, for this, I'm keeping it pretty basic and I'm just adding a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance all the way around. Side note, uh, you may remember my little trick from one of my previous videos uh, for marking off fabric. A little sliver of hand soap uh, works wonders. You can actually even take scissors and kind of sharpen it. You can get the best point and get right up against your ruler if you have a, a clear ruler or a quilting ruler or uh, something like that. Uh, works wonders, smells great. Uh, for lighter woven fabrics, you can just rip the fabric to make sure that it's perfectly straight and on grain. And if you wanna go through and just clean up any of those little stray fabrics afterwards with scissors, you're more than welcome to do that. I'm gonna make the top of the mat first. For the border, I'm just gonna sew strips around the sides. And to get nice corners, I'm just gonna sew straight across each side. And trim away any excess. For the neatest finish, you can add top stitching and iron. If you're a quilter or your machine has some fancy stitches you really want to try out, go for it. Next, I'm going to take the insole fleece fabric and I'm going to sandwich it between two layers of cotton batting. I'm going to sew these layers together just to keep them from shifting around. No need to overdo it, just really a few rows of straight stitching will do. You're really just trying to get this from kind of slipping around inside. Now I'm going to take all three layers and sew them together, right sides together of course, leaving a few inches open so that I can get my paws really in there and turn it right side out. Another trick to make this look cleaner in the edges is to trim away some of the bulk away from the seams before you turn it inside out. You can use a point turner. Um, I have used a chopstick. Anything around that is pointy and won't make a hole in your fabric works great. Time to iron it again. And the part that you haven't sewn together, make sure to iron that too. It just makes it a little easier to hand sew. You can use the machine if you want to close up this hole, but I prefer to hand sew this part. Okay, so this is it. I think it's going to work out pretty good. So you can see the back right there and it'll cover up uh, my previous shame. And uh, there we go. We're all ready to eat. So bone apple teeth, guys. So that's pretty much it. It's not going to turn the table invincible or turn it into a granite slab, but it should hopefully prevent having to look at the ghost of meals past when the mat isn't there. Hopefully this video was helpful or at least gave you an idea of something else to work on or even just inspired you to dust off your machine and make something new on the road. So sewing is always fun, but I think it's always better when it solves like a specific problem. So. Do you guys have anything specific that you are working on for the holidays? Are you making anything to give away as gifts? I would love to hear what projects you are into. Uh, until next time, go forth, be kind, be creative. Bye guys.